Okay, looks like I have the first question. Do I say the question? So that's a good question to, yeah, I was about to say, good question to start us off, so. What advice do you have to high school students who are interested in this area? That was not grammatically coherent. Let me, let me say that again. Hi, my name is Ganit and I study electrical and biomedical engineering here at UQ. And I'm with one of my lecturers, Phil, who also teaches electrical and biomedical engineering. And we're here to answer some of your questions. Thank you. Okay, looks like I have the first question. What is electrical and biomedical engineering? Uh, we get asked that a lot. So I'm gonna take a slightly broader view to start with, which is first, what's biomedical engineering? And then what we think of uh, biomedical engineering in an electrical engineering context. So biomedical engineering is the application of engineering methods and processes and technology to solve problems uh, in healthcare, medicine, and some broader fields of biology. When we're thinking about electrical engineering and how it relates to biomedical engineering, we're often thinking about the places where we see electronics um, within a healthcare environment and devices. So some really good examples you might think of if you've been to a hospital are devices like electrocardiograms to measure the rhythm of our heart, medical imaging techniques such as MRI that allow us to look non-invasively inside the body, and then also some of our uh, therapeutic devices as well. So things like ventilators used to support ventilation when the person can't themselves, have significant sensor instrumentation, and then things like electrical motors to make them work. Increasingly in electrical and biomedical engineering, we're also interested in how we use the data that we collect from these diagnostic instruments uh, and these therapeutic devices in order to make better decisions about the healthcare. So we really start to interface uh, with things like big data and machine learning to help clinicians in the healthcare environment to make better decisions and to create the new generation of medical devices and techniques that, that can improve their healthcare. So the next question is from me. Why did you decide to study electrical and biomedical engineering? So I chose engineering because I loved maths, science and technology in high school and the clear equilibrium between the three was engineering for me. Now I chose electrical and biomedical engineering was because I wanted to work behind the scenes in the medical industry. I know that biomedical engineering helps bridge the gap between engineering and the medical sciences by combining design and critical thinking from both industries. Excellent. So we know why you chose biomedical engineering and particularly electrical and biomedical engineering. Why did you choose to come to the University of Queensland? So I chose UQ for the Women in Engineering program, actually. I knew that by getting involved, I'd be exposed to a number of different opportunities and I'd be given the support system I need to succeed. Right, so if I wanted to do a major with biomedical engineering, what are my options? UQ's recently changed how the biomedical engineering program's structured. So from 2021, we'll actually have a new biomedical engineering program at the University of Queensland. Um, students will choose whether to do electrical engineering, mechanical engineering or chemical engineering as what we might think of as their core engineering uh, discipline and which will be called at UQ the specialisation. From those disciplines you can then choose to go into biomedical engineering which you'll study as a major alongside uh, one of those disciplines. This has got some really good, big advantages Firstly, you can come into first year and do a flex, what's, what we call a flexible first year program, where if you're undecided about what specialisation and major you want to do, you have an opportunity to try it in your first year before you then commit to it in your second year. Based on the courses that you do in your first year, will then help you to make that decision um, a little bit more confidently um, and hopefully the right decision uh, for you as the student as, as well. So the next question's over to me. Are there any advice you would give to high school students interested in electrical and biomedical engineering? Yes, so I think the main course of action for any high school student is to definitely get involved in STEM-based subjects. So I didn't actually do physics or maths in high school, but I knew that by the time I got into grade 12, I definitely wanted to do engineering. So when I got to university, I did a summer semester, caught up with my math courses, caught up with the physics courses, and I was good to go. But definitely get involved with um, STEM-based subjects, STEM-based extracurricular activities, because all of that helps you, helps mold you into a 
better engineer. So what career opportunities are there for electrical and biomedical engineers? Yeah, so there's some really uh, exciting opportunities in biomedical engineering more generally, and then more specifically uh, with a focus on electrical engineering as well. First and foremost, the structure of the program means that you'll graduate qualified as an electrical engineer. So you can work in any role that an electrical engineering graduate might. However, the biomedical engineering uh, major in association with that opens up employment opportunities in a range of different places. First and foremost are big uh, medical device manufacturing companies. So companies in Australia you might be familiar with are places like Cochlear and ResMed. They design and manufacture devices here in Australia and also around the world. And companies like that need biomedical engineering graduates um, every year. We also have a range of what we might think of as entrepreneurial startup companies at any one time. So these environments might be developing new medical device innovations or new medical data innovations. This particularly suit people who want to be working in a fast paced, interesting environment where you might be working on the new bit of technology that's gonna completely reshape medicine in Australia. There's also more applied clinical roles that you might uh, see in both public and private hospitals. These focus on maintaining equipment um, and making sure that the clinical staff have the right equipment available to them within the hospital to meet their requirements. And in some cases, working directly with, uh, with patients uh, to make sure the devices are applied correctly. What do you love about your degree here at the University of Queensland? So, so far in my degree, I've loved my group-based subjects. So I've done three so far, and all three of them have um, involved me being hands-on in my approach to that course. So I've been able to create with my group a glider, a um, water filter system, and a UV sensor. And all three of those hands-on projects really helped me see the industry that is engineering and what I will be entering in the future. Okay, looks like I have the last question. What does the future of this industry look like? Yeah, so biomedical engineering is always changing. So as technology develops, healthcare develops, um, and engineers are often at the forefront of uh, both making the direct developments in technology, but also applying that technology to improve healthcare. In a country like Australia, some of the things that I think are going to be very important are developing the new tools and techniques that allow us to adequately provide healthcare to a very large country and out of our uh, major capital cities, uh, a very lowly, low density populated uh, country as well. Secondly, we have an aging population in Australia and in, in, indeed in most countries around the world. When you have an aging population, we have uh, people living with uh, complex chronic diseases for long periods of time. Um, and at the moment, we know that is playing a, placing a lot of stress on the healthcare system. So it's really important that engineers are involved in developing techniques that firstly help people uh, not get those diseases to start with, but also to be able to manage those diseases in, a, in, a, in an effective way, and as much as possible, prevent people having to come into hospitals.